to this environment we are in today. Uh, family stories are at the heart of all good sagas, and uh, because I too am uh, the daughter of a uh, gangster turned bookmaker uh, from Chicago, and not the good bit, uh, it is uh, easy for me to tell stories about families, first of all, because we all have them. And then also uh, damaged men. I, you know, I know quite a few myself. <laughs> so. That's a uh, subject for some other day, possibly. But um, to me, it's a joy to work on anything that starts from the heart, which is, uh, and especially the heart that was uh, raised by this community. So thanks to Steve for everything. Sam Neil, um, I didn't have the pleasure of working with you, but you were a very big part of. Um, really kind of grounding the series and playing a very memorable antagonist. Um, you're not known for playing antagonists, but what was it that attracted you to Major Campbell in the very beginning, before the show became this uh, cultural phenomenon? Well, this is working. Uh, I read one page of Steve's script, and I said, I don't want to read any more of this. Fucking great. <laughs> I, I, I want to do it. Uh, actually, um, it was nice to get a clap when I came on. This is like being. This is like Rolling Stones. But that actually is a fair if you booby. Big app, come on. Alright then. I know where you live. And you're fucked. <laughs> From one Sam to another Sam, Sam, you played a very memorable, or you're in the process of playing a very memorable villain who uses methods that are the complete antithesis to Major Campbell. Um, how was it coming into a show that? was now very clearly established where you have to find your place and make yourself known as a villain. Um, it was pretty, pretty nerve-wracking, I think, because I was a fan of the series. Um, <laughs> I just really wanted to hear people boo me. Um, <laughs> no, I think having the opportunity to portray someone that personally I knew nothing about, but someone that I knew when I did start learning about him, Someone that was so far away from who I am as a person. I'm, I'm actually straight. I am a nice guy. I swear. Uh, I believe with I everything he that. says, obviously. Um, but no, I, I think I think because it was so far removed from me, it was such a challenge. I think, uh, and to be able to kind of enter into a world that I was a, such a fan of. I mean, it was it was a no-brainer, really. Um, and I think I've been very very lucky to be able to join something that has not, not only a great cast and a great, a great you know, storyline, but great characters, great writing, great story arcs, and uh, I, I felt very, very lucky. I felt very, very lucky, and I felt I was uh, welcomed with open arms, and yeah, I'm very happy to be here, and thank you all for coming. Yeah. And our final Sam, Samuel, you were a pretty integral part of that first season, and represented, I think, the emotional heart of your expressing outwardly what everybody was uh, dealing with and going through uh, with PTSD, which, was, which is still a big theme that runs through the season. How was it coming in and playing a character like Danny Wisbang? Hi, everyone. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I was fresh out of drama school, so I was, I was young, you know, Young actor, um, you know, handed this script and, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was blown away. You know, if you get you get set an audition through, and the characters, you know, the name is, you know, Danny Wisbang. I mean, you you sort of sold already. Um, but then obviously, you know, you sort of dig deeper and you discover why he's been given the name Danny Wisbang, um, and obviously sort of the context behind it. You know, um, you know, I did a lot of research and uh, you know, you sort of. You, you want to make sure your interpretation of, 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 of the illness is, is accurate. And, uh, 
you know, I was very fortunate to be given that opportunity. And it was, it was great that, you know, sort of Tommy and Danny had those scenes where you, saw, you know, you saw that, you, you sort of understood why Tommy was, you know, sort of this um, sociopath. Uh, you know, in a way, you know, you understood why, you know, how he was affected from, 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 from what they'd seen in France. Um, but yeah, it was fantastic for me. Um, was, thanks, thanks, mate. There you go. Um, but yeah, it was no, an extraordinary was... performance. <laughs> and really memorable. Thank you. No, no, it was great. You know, Danny, Danny was sort of, you know, blinking, you missed Danny, but he was, um, you know, I was very fortunate. Steve, Stephen wrote some, some brilliant scenes, um, you know, that, that f thankfully catched, caught people's imagination. So it was, yeah, it was great to be involved. Finn Cole, hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> A simple question. We've discussed it many times while we were making this season. Are you good or bad? I am standing up. <laughs> no different. Only about four foot five, leave it out. Can you see me now? Is Michael Gray good or bad? Is Michael Gray good or bad? Is Michael Gray good or bad? And how did you decide to play it in the end? Um, I think he's good. I've got to think he's good. I think Michael's um, Michael's the next generation. Maybe the future. Let's see. Or not. Quite divisive. Uh, Emmett, you're new to the show this season. Um, Thank you. We've worked before, and we're good friends. You've yes. played very intimidating characters before. What was it like playing a role where you have to be vulnerable and fearful of others? Um, I, I... <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess I play a lot of bad guys, uh, sociopaths, psychopaths. I've got a, a kind of a dickhead face. Uh, it's the same as my dad. It's uh, in our genes. So to play somebody, to come in straight away and play somebody uh, who's terrified of the Peaky Blinders, specifically Arthur, um, is it's great. I mean, it, it, you, this is what you want to do. You know, you want to stretch yourself. You know, it took me months to learn the Dublin accent. To get to get that down, um, so I'm just delighted to be part of this family, this show that I've been a, a fan of since the very beginning. It's one of the greatest shows ever on TV, and, and uh, I, I'm so grateful for everybody who said yes, particularly you for your incredibly uh, low standards in casting me. <laughs> So uh, apparently I was on a list of one, and I, I did I auditioned for this, but I did it in a Brummy accent, and I got it with the Brummy accent, and then I I remember I, I rang him up and said, mate, it's just taken me five weeks just to get these lines down. You you can't change the lines. I, I only know the words. If we're riffing, I'm fucked. Right, so please do not, and then he goes, <laughs> and then he just goes, okay, well, they'll probably change, number one, but let me talk to Stephen. I said, because there's never been a Dubliner in the show, has there? He goes, let me talk to Stephen, and uh, he rang me back and said, yeah, Dublin it is, and I was like, <laughs> which I, I definitely needed that since I was sharing my scenes with Paul. Um, yeah, thanks. So, Kate Phillips, you've been um, <laughs> ma married to the man beside you <laughs> for quite a long time, and it's been quite a difficult, troubled relationship. How is it working alongside Paul, and what is the dynamic that works between you both that makes Linda and Arthur the creative force that they are on what's, screen? What's... Um great about playing Linda of the seasons is that she's so changeable and over the three years, the three seasons, she's sort of started off 
From sort of one, one place and where she's landed up this year is completely different. So just kind of mapping her journey has been really exciting and you're kind of never quite sure where it's going to end up. So thanks, Steve. But um, so much of that is playing with Paul. Um, kind of in the room together and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, you're an inspiration to work with. Uh, he kind of draws a lot of, uh, of who Linda is uh, out for me and it's kind of amazing to work with you. Um, and uh, I think part of what's so exciting is what we get to do together. And uh... And what an ending of uh, episode four. Let's see what happens. Uh, Harry, you are the youngest Shelby brother, and you've spent a long time waiting in the wings, and this season you've really kind of been, I don't know if you've earned it yet, but you've certainly been given a seat at the table. What's it like in this season, having quite the arc that you have now, and having spent so many years watching a pretty phenomenal cast? Well, stand up, Finn. Speak up. You know. Oh, not, not anymore. I see what I like. That's what it's like on set. <laughs> um, I would say, you know, I, I started doing this as I, as I did um, my GCSEs, really. So, like, s started on this, I, I restarted my professional career as I was just learning what acting was. And um, I think each year has, been, has just been new for me, you know, watching, the, watching this cast without having to, like, you know, give them even more praise, but they are really are phenomenal, you know. I, I didn't really know what the world of acting was, but then through the years I've really appreciated it and sort of greatened my love for what I, you know, when you're young and these kind of things happen, you kind of don't know what the world's like, but um, it's been nice, like they've been lovely to me. Um, I say lovely, you, you just saw what Paul's like, so that, <laughs> that, that's an Uh No, just the different dynamics is great, like I need that kind of stuff, because you know, you're scared to push yourself and this has been my only sort of playground, but it's just changed every year I've come back. And um, new directors, even more, new great members to work with, so the whole time I'm trying to do my thing, I'm also absorbing and learning and uh, yeah, it's just, like genuinely, it's just like an honor. A lot of people my age don't really get to sort of, you know, get in the ring with all these le legitimate, seasoned, tried and true actors. And yeah, it's just, yeah, it's been great. Thanks. Thanks everybody. I, I, I'm excited. And finally, Paul, you've uh, become a, a firm, a uh, fan favorite playing Arthur Shelby, who's a character who is incredibly divisive, who does things that appall everybody, and then you have this wonderful vulnerability that makes us all forgive you for your actions. And I wondered how much of Arthur, where's the line between Paul Anderson and Arthur Shelby? <laughs> Sometimes I don't know, but you've really made that character your own. And it's a, it's a, it's quite an, it's quite a creation, um, and I'd love you to talk to everybody a little bit about that. This fucking place is under no management. Listen, it's Sam Neil can walk. I'll fucking walk. But I don't know where the line is drawn between me and um, Arthur. You'll probably hear me flirt from Paul Anderson to uh, Arthur fucking Shelby. I, I, I really do love playing the character and I love the city of Birmingham as well. Honestly, small leaf, fucking rifles. I just wish my brother Tommy was here or Killian was here, but... Or, or John. John boy. But uh, the line... Yeah, right now, I don't know who I am, but different fucking elements of Peaky Blinders. All I know is Stephen Knight has created something that's changed my life. And um, 
and I'm uh, certainly grateful to him and I'm indebted to him for many reasons, for the show, for, 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 for you know, the character and for, um, for this place. So, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna have another fucking walk up this one, you know what I mean? Fucking right. All right, darling. Right, yeah, all right. I only want to speak to the ladies. <laughs> Fuck, no, wait. There's Linda. Hold on. I won't tell Linda what I'm doing up here. Well, that's it. So, so thank you all. Thanks for coming, man. I just want to pass back over to Steve uh, before we wrap this up uh, for a few words. Yeah, well, again, thanks everybody for coming and for being um, such fantastic fans of the show. It really makes a difference to us, all the people who make it. We do watch, we do look, we do see the artwork, we do see all of that. And just a message from Killian, who is in New York. Um, he's filming, he would have been here, he's done, he's, um, done some recordings of stuff that you'll be hearing uh, during the day. Um, but from the, you know, the whole of us, all of us, uh, I hope you have a fantastic day by order of the Peaky Fucking Blinders. Anyone else have anything to say? Thank you, Anthony. You're the best. One more thing just before we go. It's Sam Neill's birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sam. Happy birthday to you. So it's not all that bad, right? Thank you very much. We'll see you later.